Welcome to the Inksoft store creation guide and store settings guide. So you're going to start from your dashboard and to create a new store, it's right here. Just click create new store. So just enter the store name, store directory. This controls what comes after the default domain, which is assigned to the store. And you can change this later, but this just controls the extension after this slash here. So you can change this to something else and have a different store name if you want to, and we'll continue. Obviously, if a store is public, anyone with the domain can access the storefront. If you want to make a store private, you can just enter a password here, and then anyone with the password would then be able to access the store. Okay, so we'll go public, continue. This contact info here will be displayed at the bottom of the page. Just make sure for the, for each store, you you enter the contact that you want people to contact on that store. So you can change all this information out here if you want to, and we'll continue. Store logo. I would personally recommend that you use an SVG file here, vector file. Reason why is because this scales perfectly for your email templates. If you use a PNG or a JPEG, it's kind of hard to, to upload the right size that'll fit the email templates. These don't really scale that well. Uh, so you can end up with an image that's too big or too small for the email templates. So I would just say use an SVG if you can. Store icon, this controls the favicon icon up here in each tab. Just follow these guidelines here, these pixel dimensions, and then upload your image. That image will be in the tab. Store preview image, this is really useful for social media. If you follow these guidelines here and then you paste the link to the storefront, say into Facebook, for example, it'll pull in this store preview image automatically to your post in Facebook. Uh, designer, we'll get into this more in another video. For now, we'll just turn this off, but you can turn the designer on or off for any store. Production schedule. If you set this to on demand, then I place an order today. My shipping estimate is calculated starting from today's date. So for example, let's say UPS ground has a 15 business day wait time attached to it. If I place an order today, we're looking at 15 business days away from today's date. Whereas if you set an expected production date, let's say we'll start production on the first of the next month, then any order placed between now and, and August 1st, the estimate that the customer receives will calculate starting based on this date. If I chose UPS ground, and we had a expected production date for August 1st. We're looking at 15 business days away from August 1st. This is here for, if you're doing a fundraiser store, you leave it open for the month and you start production once you close it down. This will prevent customers from hounding you for orders that you haven't even started yet. You can push back the day here. Continue. Shipping methods, you can turn these on and then you'll select which shipping methods you have integrated to your storefront. So let's just do a flat rate here. Continue. And then pick up location. If you select yes, you'll then set up a location here, type in the name. Pickup time is just processing time. So however long you think it'll take you to complete the order and then the customer can then come pick it up. This will control their estimate. And then you can or cannot display a pickup address here. There we go. Checkout settings, once you're integrated with Inksop Payments, you can then require a payment here. This is my account, I don't have it set up, just a test account. But once you're set up with payments, you can choose optional, which gives the customer the option to either pay you at checkout or arrange for payment later, or you can require that they pay you up here. Accept purchase orders only from customers I allow. If you choose this option, you can then go into each user account in the store and then give them permission to submit a purchase order or from any customer if you want to. Purchase order attachments, pretty self-explanatory. You can require an attachment with a PO or you can make it optional and then customers can upload a file of the PO and then submit that with their order and you can then download that and view it. Add gift messages. If it is a gift, let the customer add a gift message here, turn this on and then they can type in a gift message at checkout. Accept coupon codes or gift certificates. If you're not planning on setting any of these up for the store, you can just turn that off. Display estimated delivery date. If you don't want to have customers know when they're going to receive their orders, it's done when it's done. You can just turn this off. And then taxable locations, depending on where you have your Nexus set up, if you have multiple locations, you can manage your locations here and type in multiple addresses that you might be shipping from. 
can make a store tax exempt if you want to. Just turn this on, then no tax will be added. And then require order approval. You can require approval for all orders if you need to, only orders that are submitted through the designer or through the upload now, which just allows the customer to upload an image and then choose the side. Orders you haven't received payment for yet, or what I might recommend is any large orders coming in. Generally, you'd want to make sure you get everything situated before you start production. Any orders over $1,000, you'd have to approve. Custom checkout fields, these allow you to add either a text entry box or multiple choice dropdown at checkout. Basically, it allows you to ask the customer a question, choose your school. You can say multiple choice for that. You can also make it required. Field instructions, these are optional. You can add additional instructions here, but the field choices, this is where you would put different schools to choose from. And then at checkout, they would have a drop down with Ridgeview, Parkview, and then Yukaipa High School. It's gonna look like this. Continue. Store notifications, you can send out a daily order summary, shipping notifications, instant order notifications, or even contact us notifications. Just type in an email address here. And if you need to add multiple, you can. You can do as many as you want here. Just keep adding as many as you want. Social media, the share buttons. There's these little squares on the left of the page that you can display or not. If you turn that off, it won't show them but you can still have your social media links displayed at the bottom of the page, which is where they'll always be by default. Just type in the extensions, facebook.com slash whatever your business name is. Store policies. We do provide some fairly generic store policies. If you do need to change this stuff, you can just view and edit it. You can change this out here, go to do custom, and then you can change it, save it as a custom thank you message, and then you can then select this for any other store if you want to. If you are attaching a custom domain, you can do this now or later. Store is done, so we'll now go to the store and we'll take a look at the settings. To access the store settings, just go to store admin, and then on the left here, this gear store settings. Most of the stuff we just went over in the store creation wizard, but there's a couple things here that are different. Product display settings. If you want to turn off your manufacturer and your SKU from displaying to the customer, you can turn those off here. Default store order, when you're on the view all products page, you can change how it sorts the products from price, low to high, high to low, or by alphabetical. And then show available inventory. If you are enforcing your inventory, you can set a threshold here and say, once I have 24 products or less, then we'll display the remaining inventory for that product. If your store closes, you can change what the store closed page says. Store commission. If you do track commission, let's say you type in a percentage here, 25%, this will track the price of the item before tax on the storefront. So if you want to do payouts to another company or profit sharing, just type in a percentage here. And let's say you're charging $20 for a shirt. It would track 25% of each sale of that shirt and every item on the store track 25% of that sale. $20 would be $5 of that shirt. And then you can reference your payouts in our store commission report to see how much you need to pay out. SEO settings, your meta title here is how your page will appear in a Google search. The type test here, if someone searches your page and it appears in a Google search, this would be the blue link that they would click on in the Google search. Meta description is that gray paragraph of text below the blue link in a Google search. So you can control what that says here. Focus keyword, I would keep this down below five words if you can. Hit comma and just spacebar to add another one. Less is more here. Just try to keep that below five if you can. And then developer settings. You can customize a page with some CSS. We do have a CSS reference guide. And also if you're doing like Facebook Pixel, Google Tag Manager, you would activate your scripts here and you can paste in your Facebook Pixel and any sort of custom code from Google Tag Manager or Analytics here. <laughs>